whatever. Their home base right now is Delhi, India, and the whole alchemy thing. Ethiopia will be with them because Ethiopia is where they're going to drag out this Ark of the Covenant and, and say, oh, look, we found the Ark. And uh, Libya. And so uh, Peru also, another home base of theirs. Uh, Iran. So you got about well, how many countries here? You got Ethiopia, Libya, Peru, India, China, uh, and Iran. And Iraq will follow. Assyria will most likely follow. So you can see a, an alliance already. And for those of you thinking that uh, America will be at odds with Maitreya, uh, they will align with him. They will align. Whoever is president at that time, whether it be Obama or Hillary or if George Bush Jr. stays in office, they will align with him. They're going to make some kind of a treaty with him, and I don't understand what it is. Uh, but they make some kind of pact with this Maitreya. But he breaks it. He annuls it. And I don't think this is the Daniel Treaty, but like I said, uh, you never know what's going to happen. Because I, I sometimes I get the feeling that there's going to be the, the good Antichrist, bad Antichrist, where the bad one shows up first, which is Maitreya, and plunges the world into war and breaks his agreements with nations. And then he dies, and then the, the good Antichrist comes, which is this Sananda Esu. He'll come in uh, September with the hosts of heaven, UFOs, the whole glowing going on. Uh, and he's he's also not a good one. He's also just Satan in another charade. But you have these two coming back to back, several months in between each other, and they're supposed to be allies when they're here on Earth. Uh, because even the Muslims believe that uh, when their Mahdi returns, that Jesus will also return with him. And so one thing that they teach, and you'll never hear any of this in the churches today, uh, but something they already fully expect in the Middle East is for... Their Mahdi to arrive, this Maitreya, and then Jesus to arrive with him. And that's exactly what's basically going to happen. Uh, of course, so many churches today are so wrapped up in this whole Jerusalem temple thing. And, and you know, I was telling, telling some people today, you know, by the time Israel even builds a temple and the whole charade gets going in Israel with this temple, most of Americans will be dead. So it doesn't really matter to focus all of your attention and thinking, oh, the tribulation's not going to start until the temple's rebuilt in Jerusalem. That's kind of like a signal marker for the Torah-believing Jews in Israel when to flee. Uh, because as much as I harp about the, the serpent seed line and the fake Jews in Israel, there are remnant Torah-believing Jews there as well. Uh, I think as soon as they see this uh, Jesus, this panoramic TV, satellite TV version of Jesus and his history, and then returning to earth... Uh, I think that's when they should just go ahead and flee the country. Uh, because because uh, when he comes, he brings hell with him. Hell and Hades arrive with him. He is actually the fourth horseman, the, uh, the pale horseman. And when he arrives, there's going to be several different alien invasions, that being one of them. Uh, but there's going to be several different alien invasions uh, when he arrives. And so that's when the Torah remnant uh, really needs to, to take to the hills. Take, the, take off the Petra and Jordan because your prophets of, of the Old Testament have warned them about the abomination of desolation and and so the churches the churches these Jews have always been waiting for this one a temple to be rebuilt again and for the sacrifices to resume how can how can that not be an abomination itself just with the fact that they would resume sacrifices in the temple because Jesus was the Yeshua the Son of God was already the perfect sacrifice and so that totally uh, nullifies and, and degrades his perfect sacrifice if they were to bring out a temple again. And start sacrifices again. Uh, but either way, you know, the problem being so many people in America, 278 million, and probably three out of four people proclaim to be a Christian or, or to love the Lord or something, very high in numbers, but very low as actual doers, actual followers. Uh, but most will be dead by the time that even happens. Uh, we've got martial law coming to America. When Maitreya comes... And our country, our president, aligns with this Maitreya. He's coming after the Christians, folks. One of the first things he does is come after the Bible-believing people in America. Uh, and so it, we may never even be here, most of us, to even see this terrestrial coming down from the sky. I know uh, at one point you'll see that this is a worldwide event, that every person in the world is going to be able to watch the satellite panoramic view 
of our history being portrayed in, in space where we'll be able to see uh, this Hollywood production. Uh, but I stumbled on something into the codes uh, toward the fact that America may not be able to see it. America may be one of the only countries blocked from seeing it. And I had to laugh. Um, <laughs> because part of this whole charade is this, this satellite TV that they have planned, this Blue Beam project, part of it is called, is uh, because the aerosols sprayed in the air through chemtrails make it necessary for the holographics they need. I don't think they're going to be as dependent on holographics now that they have this, these satellites in space, uh, but they could be. Either way, because of the orgone and the fact that our the orgone that me and, and, and other members of the 144,000 have been distributing across this country for three years now will dis- dissipate chemtrails, <laughs> uh, it may not be able to work in America. Uh, and so as much as we wanted to have popcorn and punch and sit and watch this whole charade, <laughs> America may be blocked from seeing it because it won't happen. It won't work here. That's a possibility. Um, and even if it does work here, then, uh, you know, what can you do? The, the, the world's going to be dark for three days. You're not going to be able to see anything. They plan on blocking out the sun for three days in September so that everybody's kind of a a prisoner to this. You can stay in your house. You can go outside and watch the light show in heaven. Uh, (laughs) But either way, it's going to hoodwink Israel. They're going to actually believe that he is their Messiah. Uh, Probably even possibly fooling some Torah-believing Jews. And that's why it's so important to get the word out that Satan comes before The real son of God comes. Satan comes first. He's going to come posing as the son of God. Uh, Because most people are just going to get hoodwinked into the charades that are coming. And they're good, folks. I've I've been saying they're going to be very good. I see all the time in the codes. People are shocked. People are surprised. Uh, And one of the biggest lies in the churches today is that the bride won't be deceived. It doesn't say the bride won't be deceived. It says the elect won't be deceived. The elect are 144,000 because they won't even be here. <laughs> so they can't be deceived. They won't be here. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, if the bride couldn't be, see, be deceived then, they wouldn't be deceived now. You know, if you look at the churches today and how many of some drowning in deceptions and adopting New Age practices and New Age psychology instead of the Word of God, they don't even teach that anymore. Like you go into a church today and all they do is preach Paul like he was an apostle. The Lord had 12 apostles. Paul wasn't one of them. Uh, Matthias replaced Judas, not Paul. Paul came in his own name. He was the very one the Lord uh, warned about when he left. Uh, but that's all they do is they preach Paul and then, uh, you know, I don't even think any of them teach Bible prophecy anymore. Every once in a while you might hear them t- uh, warn people to stock up on food and water. Uh, and, a, and a good reason for that, folks, because if you look at um, our atmosphere and they're just pounding it and pounding it and pounding it with these chemtrails and their weather weapons and, and changing the atmosphere and everything, they're going to blow it up. They're going to blow our atmosphere up. Our atmosphere is literally going to be on fire. It's going to cause a horrid famine here, a drying up of all the grass, a burning of the trees. Uh, you read about these judgments and the trumpet judgments. That's how, because our atmosphere blows up because of all these chemtrails. The whole chemtrail operation, uh, which is almost like Oregon. I've always said Oregon has 101 uses, so do the chemtrails. Uh, the barium, it's, which is rat poison. Uh, mixed with everything else, aerosols for their holographics to work. Uh, just everything that they're doing, they, they use uh, chemicals and the chemtrails uh, to affect people's DNA, causes diseases, they use it for population control. Uh, just 101 uses for chemtrails. Uh, and so that's what's going to happen. When I read uh, Third 